Good evening. My name is Joan Mass and I am the Superintendent of Schools and I would like to thank everyone for being here tonight. Our community members, our parents, our administration, our teachers, our staff, and our Board of Education. Tonight's presentation is to provide clarification to the District Restart and Recovery Plan. This is not a public board meeting, rather an information presentation in response to questions parents submitted. We could not do a Zoom call because of the number of people who, who were interested in, in participating in tonight's call, but we have gone through all of the questions and we did our best to, to find the broad stroke topics to address. We also know that our building principals will be following up on specifics as it relates to the school and, and your child. We have read your questions and we have focused on answering them tonight. So if, if questions are not answered, you can reach out to us and we will follow up. The Board of Education members here are attending tonight as, as parents and they have been very much engaged in this plan and are on the call tonight as parents and community members. Noelle Baxter is our social studies supervisor and professional development coordinator. And Noelle is going to explain the two models that parents can choose for their child. So we have developed two different models for learning this fall. And in the survey that was sent to parents, we're asking you to select the one that will best uh, support your child in their learning this fall. So the first model is called the hybrid model, and it's a hybrid model because it contains both in-person instruction as well as remote virtual instruction from home. The students will be divided into two cohorts. One group will be designated as the blue group and the other group will be designated as the, as the red group simply to be able to keep track of who's attending school on which particular days. So in the hybrid model, each group will attend school in person for two days of the week. So it could be Monday and Tuesday if you're in the blue group or Thursday and Friday if you're in the red group. All students in both groups would be attending virtual classes on Wednesdays. In addition, all students will be participating in virtual sessions in the afternoon. So the in-person sessions will be happening in the morning during our four hour single session period. And then all students will be participating from home or other locations in the virtual sessions in the afternoon. On any days that students are not attending school in person, they will be participating in those classes from their home via video conferencing tools, Google Classroom, and other digital tools. So if a student is attending school in person on Monday and Tuesday, they would continue to be attending their classes on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday in a virtual platform. The second option is the fully remote online model. For those students, they would participate in all of their classes, both the morning and afternoon sessions, via video conferencing tools, Google Classroom, and other digital platforms. Students who choose the fully remote online model will not attend any in-person instruction, but they will still be participating in all of their classes and interacting with their teachers, as well as their peers who might be attending in person or who are also attending from home. So students in both of the models will be following their regular school schedule. They will be engaging with their teachers and their peers in real time and they will be participating in their classes and the same experiences as the students who are in the hybrid model. We're asking each family to carefully consider these two models and then complete the survey by this Thursday at noon so that we can begin assigning those cohorts. Once we know which students will be planning to attend in-person instruction and which students will be participating in a fully remote online experience, we'll be able to assign those cohorts and create lists for families to begin their planning. If your child begins the year in the hybrid format, and then you decide that the virtual format is the best option for them, you can make that change at any time. However, if you decide that you want to start the year in the fully remote online virtual platform, you will need to provide advance notice to your principal if you would like to change into the hybrid model and have that in-person instruction. Of course, both of these plans are going to have to be monitored and adjusted as is necessary or required by the conditions in the state and locally. We also want families to be aware that schools are subject to closure based on directives from the Department of Health. And at that time, all students would then participate in that fully remote online learning model, which again, follows their regular daily school schedule, participating with their peers and their teachers in real time in all of their classes. And now Dr. Mass is going to explain a little bit more about the thinking behind the models that we have developed. 
So when we were reviewing all of the different models that were ahead of us, we certainly knew that we wanted to bring students back full time. That, that is everyone's goal. Um, but the first thing that we need to consider is everyone's safety. So by choosing the hybrid model, we are bringing back half of our students. And in bringing half of our students on in two groups, we are able to address the, the things that will, will promote safety. And that being the social distancing, the, the mask wearing, and the hand hygiene. We know by having half of our students in our buildings, in our classes, is going to keep both our students and staff as safe as possible. We also were looking to make sure that we were maximizing teacher availability for students. So in the model that we created, as Ms. Baxter had mentioned, it will follow a schedule that will transfer to different models. So while we're in the hybrid model, should a disruption occur and we have to go fully virtual, the students will still be following the, the same model. And therefore that's providing seamless transitions. The, the school day is divided into the AM and PM sessions. We need to take a break because we cannot have lunch in school because we can't have restaurants opened and a high school or middle school cafeteria would be a very large restaurant and that would not be safe. So we need to dismiss our students before lunch and give them time to have that space before they join their teachers and additional learning in the afternoon. I would now like to introduce Brooke Esposito. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. So the block so schedule, the block schedule here 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 looks exactly like it would have if we weren't home in any kind of pandemic. Um, it's the one that we planned originally. So we will operate on an AB block schedule. So we will have an A day that is periods A1, 2A, 3A, and 4A. And then the following day will be B day where students have a different class, 1B, 2B, 3B, and 4B. These classes will be 56 minutes in length. Um, and students will therefore have four classes every day. Dr. Heisey is going to tell you a little bit more about what these schedules will look like. Thank you, Ms. Esposito. This graphic illustrates the block schedule uh, that Brooke Esposito just uh, described. The AB pattern will operate during the entire school year. This AB schedule was planned and put into place prior to COVID-19 even being present. This graphic illustrates how the AB block schedule will operate on a single session or a four hour day. It is the same format we will use when we return to normalcy on a full day, obviously the periods will be longer. I should mention that the PM Votech students will not be responsible for attending the afternoon classes at Scotch Plains Fanwood High School since they will be in attendance at the Union County Vocational Technical School. We'll move on to the next slide. So this next slide takes an example of a student schedule and applies it to the A-B concept. Um, the, the classes listed above are taken directly from PowerSchool. This particular student on A-Day will begin their day in AP Computer Science. They will then move on in Block 2 to English Advanced Placement. Block 3 will be Advanced Placement Chemistry and block four will be a physics class. So that would be this particular student's A day. On B day, this particular student would attend global perspectives. They would then, then move on to uh, block two, physical education. Block three would be a math analysis course. And then they would have their Spanish four class in block four. I would like to show you one other example, if I could. So the second example, once again, has the uh, power school exhibit above. And uh, this particular student does have uh, a semester course. 
um, when we begin the school year, we will be in semester one. So for all intents and purposes, um, we can uh, disregard semester two uh, because that will not begin until after the holiday break uh, near the end of January. So this student will begin um, their A day, block one, with the intro to broadcast journalism. Block two on A day, uh, they will have a study hall. Second semester, as you can see, they will have psychology. Block three on A day, they have a chemistry course. And then they have the physical education course, block four. And then you can move over to um, B day. Likewise, in block one, they have algebra, block two, Spanish, US history is block three, and they have an English class uh, during, during block four. I would now like to introduce Dr. Dumaresk, principal of Park Middle School. Thank you, Dr. Heisey. So similar to the high school approach of block scheduling, uh, the middle school has also uh, decided to modify the traditional nine period day to operate in an AB block schedule. Now this is a change from our traditional nine period day. So I will attempt to explain some of the changes um, that this means. Now we will be maintaining the six day cycle, which means that our schedule will be stretched over 12 days. What's important to note is that students will be engaged in four classes per day, just like the high school block. But in this case, we're going to keep our period structure. So students will attend period one through four on A days. Students will then attend their period five through nine classes on B days. And you have to think about subtracting one period um, on the B days for lunch. All AM classes will be 55 minutes in length and PM classes will be 40, 14 minutes in length. And we will discuss more uh, about this later. So this adjustment to the schedule was made on feedback from the spring from students, parents, and teachers about workload management and increasing organization for students. So I'd like to show you two examples of what this will look like. So which classes meet on which days? If we're taking a student's original schedule and we're essentially breaking it in half, right? Periods one through four meeting on A days and periods five through nine meeting on B days, we've color coded what that might look like. So you can see the original sixth grade schedule here on your left, which would be something you might see in power school or in paper. And then on your right, you can see that periods one through four are coded as A days and then periods five through nine are coded as B days. So again, it's almost like breaking, uh, breaking one cycle day in half and spreading it out over two days. For a more specific example, I just turn it over to our assistant principal of Park, Christy Moreno. Thank you. So imagine that you are a sixth grader and imagine that today is a day 4B. If you take a look on the right, you'll see the entire schedule as presented on the last slide broken in half. So you can take a look and you'll see that you'll be attending courses in purple, which are five, six, eight, and nine. So period five will be from 810 to 905. Period six will be from 908 to 1003. That'll be language arts. The 1008 to 1103 class writing workshop is a period eight class. 1108 to 1203 is math. That's a period nine class. Students will go home for their lunch and have their break. And then in the afternoon, they will repeat these classes specifically on this day in the afternoon. If you take a look at the next example, here is what an overall block schedule will look like for our grade six through eight middle school students. So on A day, students will attend their period one through four classes in the morning. We'll have a staggered dismissal and lunch. And then in the afternoon, they'll attend again their period one through four classes. On B days, they'll attend periods five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You'll notice a difference for periods five, six, and seven based on what a traditional lunch schedule might have looked like if we were in school for a full day in serving lunches. And that will be specific to grades six, seven, and eight. Students will see those on their schedules. And then in the afternoon, again, after their staggered dismissal and their lunch and their break, they'll attend those classes on those days. Dr. Dumaresk. 
So we also wanted to address the block schedule for our fifth graders. Um, so it will look almost identical to the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade experience um, with a few key differences. So they will have an AB block schedule on the six day cycle, just like our uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, but instead of four classes, the students will attend three classes per day. Um, they will go to periods one, two, and three on A days, and then seven, eight, and nine on B days. And all of our specials and core classes will be encompassed throughout those two days. We've also included something called flex time. And this is for differentiated academic instruction and socio-emotional learning every single day. And basically what that means is that individual fifth grade teachers will have the opportunity to get, give kids academic and emotional time for whatever they need based on what they know about their students. So AD classes will be 65 minutes in length, B days will be 55 minutes in length, and then instruction will continue in the afternoon, similar to the middle school schedule, after students have time to travel home and have lunch. And if you take a look here, this is another block schedule for the fifth grade so that you can take a look and you can see the timing and what A day periods will look like for the students. They will have from 8, 10 to 9, 15, perhaps it'll be language arts, then reading, math, and flex time. And then in the afternoon, after their dismissal, lunch and playtime, they will have additional instruction in their core subjects for language arts, reading, and math. On B days, again, they'll have some flex time. They will have their social studies and their science and specials periods. Um, this is just an example. All homerooms and all fifth grade classes will have specials at different times during their A day or their B day. Most likely, it will be on a B day. Um, and then everybody will have instruction in their core subjects with their homeroom teacher and with those teachers on their uh, for language arts, reading and math. Dr. Heidi. So, so this next slide, uh, this is a graphic um, that illustrates the month of October, a, a panoramic view, if you will, as it relates to the AB block schedule and the blue and red groups. As you can see, the AB schedule or cycle is continuous and consistent throughout the month of October and the entire school year. Likewise, it connects with the same color coding for both of our middle schools. And here we have a similar cohort schedule for our middle schools. And as Dr. Heise shared, the color coding is the same because we need to keep the consistency for childcare reasons with siblings across all schools. Um, in addition, at the high school and middle schools, all A days and B days are the same for continuity purposes. So whenever there's an A day at the middle school, there will also be an A day at the high school. Um, and now, for a look on a deeper dive into what instruction will look like specifically in this newly reimagined uh, virtual learning, we turn it back over to Noelle Baxter. So this is a, an example of what a class period will look like in those morning sessions. So as they just reviewed in their block schedule um, examples, those morning class periods are extended times um, where the students and the teachers will be interacting with each other again um, you know, with following their regular class schedule. So in a typical class period of 55 minutes or so, um, what we will be expecting is that all of the students and teachers will be engaging um, in the very beginning of the lesson all together with some um, activities to start the lesson via video conferencing. So for example, all the students and the teachers could log into a Google Meet. The teacher would greet the students, take attendance, um, provide an introduction to the lesson and provide direct instruction on whatever the content or skills that are being covered for that day would be. The teacher would then transition the students to potentially some collaborative group work. So students might be working in small groups using virtual breakout rooms and Google tools. They could be collaborating on a project in Google Docs or in Google Slides and talking with each other about the information that they're learning in that particular class. The next part of the lesson could move into an independent practice time period where all students will be working on an assigned task. Um, and during that time, because students are going to be working on their tasks potentially in um, virtual areas, again, using Google Docs or Google Tools, the teachers will be able to provide feedback to students. And again, students who are participating in the in-person learning and students who are participating in the fully remote learning are all doing these activities together, connecting with each other through video conferencing and the Google Tools. 
Finally, at the end of the lesson, the teacher and the students will all come back together again, live together in their video conferencing um, session to share ideas, ask and answer questions, and summarize learning for the day. So that's a very um, basic structure that we expect classes to follow, but it's important to note that the students and the teachers will be interacting with, with each other throughout that class period. And again, students who are participating in the in-person instruction, as well as the students who are participating in remote instruction are engaging together and with the same activities and the same lessons. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Holloway and Mr. Dracci, who are gonna talk more about what happens in those afternoon periods. Uh, thank you, Noel. The PM session is a required part of our school day. Students must be in attendance for the PM session classes. Attendance will be taken. At the middle school, students will participate in four 14-minute sessions with their teachers they had for that particular day. So as explained earlier, for example, on Friday, if I have met with my period six through nine teachers for the AM session, in the afternoon on Friday for that PM session, I would meet with my teachers for a period six through nine once again. Students will use this time to reinforce and expand upon concepts taught and learned earlier in the day. For high school students, online learning will continue for all students during this PM session. I will now turn it over to Ms. Morano. So all students will be getting devices. Um, all students will be issued a device as soon as they become available. For students in grades five through 11, uh, they will each be receiving an iPad with a keyboard. And in grade 12, all students will be getting MacBook Airs. It is important to note that sh students should bring their own device, their iPad or their MacBook Air if they're in grade 12, and the charger to and from school each day. Students should also bring earbuds or headphones to and from school every day for their own personal use. There will be no additional devices for students to borrow during the school day. So it is important that everybody remember to bring their own device to school and back home with them at the end of the instructional day so that they can continue on with their learning. And now on to Lisa Howard for our next piece of information. So in looking to um, improve our instructional strategies, we of course need to talk about how we are going to support teachers in their use of instructional technology. So at the end of the year, we conducted various staff surveys and we identified areas for professional development on using technology to enhance um, instruction. As a result of those surveys, we have launched a series of summer workshops for the Google Suite, and those workshops are well underway. And we are happy to announce that we have a few more weeks and of rounds of workshops coming up um, as well. We have identified 41 teachers in the district who will become Google certified educators and will serve as district tech coaches for their buildings and their departments. These tech coaches will be working with teachers throughout the year to provide instructional technology support and after school workshops as needed. And lastly, we're proud to mention that the SPF um, Education Enrichment Foundation has generously supported this initiative and has provided um, a generous amount of funding to help our professional development with technology and to help ensure that our tech coaches become Google certified educators this year. And now back to Dr. Holloway and Mr. Jirache. Uh Thank you, Lisa. So now I'm gonna speak to you about mass drinks and snacks. While in the building and on school grounds, all students must wear a face mask. The mask must cover the student's nose and mouth. Students will be provided a mask break, weather permitting. Additionally, mask break will be provided via physical education class, weather permitting as well. Middle, middle school students will have a snack break, weather permitting. If medical needs requ uh, require that a student have a snack Arrangements will be made through a 504 or in health plan. Students may bring a water bottle to be filled at one of our water filling stations, water bottle filling stations throughout the school. Water fountains, the ones in which one must place their mouth on a spout to drink, will be disabled. Now on to Mr. Jirache.
Mr. G, you're muted. Got it. So one of the major questions that we will need to address is when will I find out what days my child will attend school? Uh, the process leading up to that involves families completing a survey that was sent out by the middle and high schools. Uh, the survey will need to be completed by August the 13th. Based on the information that we garner from the surveys, uh, the principal will contact anyone who has not completed the survey, compile uh, the completed information so that we can split uh, groups up into cohort cohorts balanced um, between hybrid and virtual, virtual learners. Uh, families will be notified of cohort days during the week of August 24th, earlier if all the surveys are completed, um, and we will then be able to notify families of the actual uh, student schedule during the week of August the 31st. Uh, back over to Dr. Holloway from OR and the cohorts. Thanks, Mr. G. So one of the questions that has come up is, can I ask for my child to be in a cohort for, uh, for, child, for child care and or transportation? So regarding that specific concern, you can speak to your principal to make a request. However, placement cannot be guaranteed. Please only make these requests if it is absolutely necessary for child care and or transportation, not for your child to be coupled with another friend. Requests will slow the process of assigning students and communicating these cohorts to families. Now on to Mr. Jarache. Thank you, Dr. Holloway. So safety and transportation go hand in hand in this particular scenario. And with respect to the buses, buses will be cleaned daily with hospital grade disinfected. Also, so as to uh, assist with um, the proper loading and unloading of, uh, of uh, student personnel, assigned seats uh, will be given. Uh, also, the assigned seats will be as far apart as possible. On the bus, uh, masks will be required. Also assisting with um, health is the fact that we are looking to have the windows open, weather permitting, so that we get a healthy circulation of air in the buses. The number of students on each bus will be determined once all surveys are completed. So once again, it is very important to reiterate that those surveys um, should be completed as soon as possible so we can make the proper arrangements for the buses as soon as possible. Uh, to speak more to safety precautions, there will be a limit to the number of students in each room during in-person instruction. Again, as is the case with the buses, masks must be worn at all times in the classrooms. Also, to the extent possible, uh, social distancing, six feet, will be maintained. Uh, again, that is when possible. Uh, we will be limiting the number of students in restrooms uh, that are permitted to go to the restroom uh, at any particular time so that, again, we can also help to maintain appropriate social distancing and uh, hygiene. Each classroom will be provided with hand sanitizer so that um, upon entry, students will be able to disinfect their hands. Uh, we're going to also limit shared materials and shared spaces. So um, as your student goes throughout uh, the course of the day, uh, they will be having access to as few touch points as possible with um, shared materials. As is the case with the buses, we will be looking to have our windows open and air purifiers for rooms will be provided for those rooms without windows. Our custodial staff will also be following uh, best practices in cleaning protocols and scheduling of that cleaning. To speak with us more uh, with respect to safety protocols, I turn it back over to Dr. Holloway and to Ms. Esposito. Thank you, Mr. G. So at both the middle school and the high school levels, students will be required to change classes. Students in the high school will follow a one-way traffic pattern. At the middle school, students will move through the hallways keeping to the right. The middle school hallways will be divided in half to assist students with this process. Likewise, staff will be on hand during the transition time to assist and directing students with respect to maintaining proper social distance. Classrooms will not be cleaned between classes. However, students may bring wipes to clean their surface area should they desire. Now I will turn it over to Dr. Dumaras and Ms. Morano. Thank you, Dr. Holloway. 
Uh, as you can see, we take the safety, the health and safety of students and staff very seriously, so much so that we have written this into an addendum to our code of conduct. And we want to very clearly express that any infractions related to safety, such as refusing to wear a mask or removing a mask, things of this nature, will be considered a high level infraction, which is endangering the safety of others. And just to reiterate and to underscore this, school administration will be implementing progressive discipline related to these violations and following up with students and their families immediately. On to Brooke Esposito. So what can you do to get your student ready for learning in September? There are a few things that we noticed over the course of the past school year that we think would be helpful for this school year. You have to make sure that your child is in the right mindset and ready to learn. So encourage habits that foster learning. Instead of letting them take their class in their bed under their covers, as sometimes kids want to do, you need to create a space that is a designated learning space with good lighting, with supplies, with their laptop or their iPad available and limited distractions. So siblings not trying to distract them or perhaps ask them to leave their phone someplace separate from their learning space because we all know how distracting that can be. You should also en encourage your child to keep a schedule. Get up at the same time every day. Have breakfast before school. Have something set up so that they feel like they're getting up and continuing with the day. This is good for their social and emotional well-being. And I think that we can all acknowledge that during this time, a schedule has been something very helpful for us all. You should stay calm and stay positive. They're going to look to you and see how you're reacting to their school schedule and to what's going on in the community. If they see you being calm and positive, then they're gonna be ready to go into their learning environments with positivity and dare I say excitement. Um, build mask endurance. So students are staying home right now and they're not used to wearing masks all the time. Maybe to go to the supermarket and come back. What you need to do is, or need to try to do, is encourage your student to wear a mask for an hour today and two hours the next day and three hours the next day until you work them up to being able to wear masks for a extended period of time. This way, when they get to school in September, they're not gonna be distracted by the mask and they're gonna be ready to learn and ready to concentrate. Also model social distancing because kids are hanging out with their neighbors. Sometimes they're hanging out with their friends and they're out of the, these are people they see all the time. So they feel comfortable, not social distancing. But when they get to school, they're going to see these students and they're gonna feel like they want to go up to them and hug them, et cetera. So just make sure that they practice changing that behavior. And one piece that's pretty important, and if you're here watching tonight, you already know this. If you are looking for information, go straight to the source where you know that the information is going to be accurate. Go to your school website, go to the district website, go to your principal. When you have a question, go to someone who can answer. I think we all sometimes get our information from common sources like social media, and we sometimes get upset about things that aren't worth getting upset about. So to save you all of that distress, just go straight to your principal or your district, just district website. Um, and Dr. Jumersk is gonna tell you a little more about what kids should bring to school. Thank you, Ms. Esposito, and very well said. Uh, so once we've prepared over the summer, what do we actually need to show up to school with? So we can't underscore this enough. You must bring students every single day, your device, an iPad for the middle school and most of the high school, except for our seniors, and your charger. Very important to note, parents, do not purchase an iPad case. The district is providing one and students will not be uh, allowed to take off the district provided iPad case. We also would like students to bring headphones or earbuds with them to school every day a leak-proof water bottle labeled with names. We have a giant collection at Park Middle School and are lost and found right now, so please make sure that your names are on them. Um, also, backpacks, although allowed at the high school, will be prohibited at the middle schools. We are not assigning lockers, so we do expect students to carry all of their belongings with them. Middle school students will be permitted to bring a small see-through individual bag with a limited amount of suggested school supplies, and we will be providing parents 
with school supply lists in the coming weeks. And now, moving along to some other questions that have come up that I will happily answer. So, what if a student or teacher tests positive? How will parents be notified? And will schools close? This is a very common question that we saw on the survey. And the guidance that we are giving to you is that we will follow the directives from the county and town health department who will set those thresholds for us. What type of screening is in place? Parents will be required to screen students prior to entering the school day by filling out some sort of form or survey, more information to come on that. Next, um, will our students have some sort of orientation to learn more about what will be expected? Um, we can tell you, yes, a PSA has been prepared for families regarding health and safety protocols and will be shared with families shortly. Also, class schedule will be shared via PowerSchool the week of August 31st. And the middle schools, <clears throat> at the middle schools, we are currently working on a modified version of our traditional fifth grade orientation. Likewise, we are working on a modified version of our sixth grade walkthrough. Both will occur on September 2nd, more details to follow. With regard to the distribution of technology, our technology department is currently working on a plan. And once that plan has been solidified, we will inform you of how the technology uh, devices will be distributed to students. And now on to our new assistant superintendent, Dr. McGrary. This might be a good moment to take a deep breath. Um, my name is Robert McGarry. I am soon to be your new assistant superintendent, I'm joining you this year for the first time. Um, it has been a real privilege to, uh, over the, the course of the last several months, to be a, an observer and a participant in many of the meetings that have taken place to develop this plan. Um, in terms of when we will transition back to a full in-person schedule, um, we are still uh, determining that, working with our Department of Health um, and the Department of Education um, to, to develop what those key metrics are for when we will be able to um, go back to school full time. And this most recent meeting of the district uh, restart and reopening committee had some really important VIP guests, uh, teachers, as well as um, some students from Scotch Plains Fanwood High School. Um, and to say that I'm already feeling a sense of pride for our students would be an understatement. Um, the students here are remarkable. Um, and we had an opportunity to hear from them and to learn from them about their experiences uh, with at-home learning in the spring and also what their hopes are for uh, this coming school year and the hybrid model to begin with. Um, and when I listened to the students speak, I learned um, that, that three different themes came up from, from their conversations. One is that they really recognize the value of learning from and with their teachers and with their peers in real time. Um, these students, James, Emily, Alexa, Ryan, and JJ, said things like, I would hope that the at-home learning time would have more opportunities for student-teacher interaction with Google Meets. We should have time for us all to learn together, think together, and help each other. And I'm glad that students will have the opportunity to see our teachers in person again and be in a dedicated learning environment rather, to, rather than just being at home. Students also revealed that they really have, have learned who they are as learners um, and perhaps maybe even with at-home learning, helping them to learn some of that along the way. Students said things like, I prefer to see how a problem is solved or read through something with a teacher present to know I understand it correctly. Or the only other aspect to remote learning that I did not really connect with was that some teachers didn't offer a variety of assignments. Students gave us really truthful, critical, honest feedback. And lastly, while independent learning is better for some, I'd rather have the chance to be part of classroom interactions and discussions. 
These discussions help me remain focused as I am learning from my classmates. And so we want to really capitalize upon um, students' knowledge of themselves as learners. Um, but also this really ties into the work we're going to be doing this year around anti-racism and anti-bias work with our students to, uh, to make those moments where they are learning in a social setting um, more robust, more rigorous, more respectful uh, for them all. And finally, students want everyone to be safe, which is exactly what we all want and what you all want. Um, one student said, going back full time isn't a smart move because of the pandemic, but I feel the school is taking steps in the right direction to make school feel as normal as possible. And one student said, it makes me very sad knowing that the year won't be what I had looked forward to, this, this student being a senior, but I am willing to accept that if it means our district will be safe. You have so much to be proud of um, in, in the students that attend our schools, and I look forward to meeting them in both the hybrid setting as well as when we're all back together um, when we are through the pandemic. Thank you. So I would like to just thank everyone for your time tonight and attending to learn more about our startup plan. As, as the student said, safety is at the forefront of us moving forward in, in the hybrid model, the at-home learning model, and or when the, the wonderful day comes when we could come back full time. On, on the footer of every page of the plan, it says that we are considering the model that we will use based on the available data that we know. At this current time in New Jersey, the data says that things are looking good and we do hope that our students will be coming back. At the same time, we still await the Department of Health protocols that we can review to ensure that our buildings are safe and all of the practices that we have put in place are safe. So we, we still have a little bit more flesh to, to put onto our protocols to ensure that. At the same time, we know that this pandemic is going to end and our wonderful school system and community will come back to where we were um, pre-March timeframe. And it's very important that we move forward in supporting each other, that we're ready to pivot together through this pandemic for the sake of our, for our children and the good relationships that we have. So have a good evening and take care. <laughs>